Okay, folks, here it is. <laughs> the, uh, I don't know, Frankenstein's monster? Is that what we'll call it? So, here's what I came up with for a case. All right. Um, I got a little bit of, uh, did, a, got a, did a little bit of woodworking on it. And I used a lot of the lumber that I had laying around. And, of course, I used the measure once, cut twice method. <laughs> you all know what, what that means, huh? Anyways, we got through it. Um, so, the wood that I used on this is actually, I really like the looks of it. You see, here's the side of the cabinet. And as you can see, this is pine, believe it or not. And it's these are just glued up craft panels that you can buy like in a hardware store or in a craft store and I saw that you know they're like seven bucks for these and I saw this you know how this has this wood pattern in it you know these grays and silvers and tans and all that and I really liked it so I thought I'd use it and I also had some extra paduk left over from a table project that I had built uh, I, I made a uh, kitchen table for my one sister, and Paduk is a is a uh, exotic hardwood, and it's it's out of South America. It's very hard, and it's actually really toxic too. If you cut it, the sawdust will make your nose bleed. But it, it's a beautiful um, wood, as you can see. It gets that orangish red color, and as it ages. It turns almost like a brownish, reddish, purple color. It's beautiful. So I just use that for trim. It's very hard, so it should protect the edges of this soft pine pretty well. And it also adds a little bit of character to the to the amp. Again, I just did a little bit of, I don't know, I played around. Um, a real solid top I put on it. And guess what this is? Can you guys guess what this top is made of? It's actually a old stair tread. See how it's full, one inch thick, solid pine, and really nice looking wood. So that's a really solid top, and if I put a handle on that, by it'll be no problem, um, you know, holding the weight of this amplifier. And it is a little bit heavy, but actually, you you it's not as heavy as you would think. Pine is very light weight wood. The speaker that I'm using is by a company called Sika, S-I-K-A, I think it's spelled, or S-I-C-A. And this is a little bit of a unique speaker. Um, it is a bass guitar speaker, but the one of the things that's kind of unique about it is the magnet that they use. They're actually using a neodymium magnet. And, you know, on these big bass speakers, this is a 350 watt speaker, but it's only got a tiny little magnet this big, but it's since it's neodymium, it's a very high-powered magnet for how small it is. So it's a very small, lightweight magnet um, with a die-cast frame. You can see the frame on it, and it's got a you know kind of an accordion surround, and uh, it still sounded a little bit too uh, deep. You know, I, I don't want to say deep, but just kind of a little bit thuddy. So I put these, I had these little ports, and I put them in, and it brought this thing perfectly where it needs to be. So, um, yeah, I mean, sounds pretty good. It does have some problems that I'm going to work on in circuit. Number one, I think this, this amp has entirely too much gain. You see where my volume is here? If I turn it much higher than that, the amp gets so loud it distorts. And... I think part of the problem is I own three bass guitars and t the two of them, one is a fretless so I'm not going to count that, but the other two is a four string and a five string fretted guitars. They both have what's called active electronics and what that means is the, the pickups go through a preamp circuit that's built into the guitar. You actually have to put a nine volt battery in the guitar. And it, because of that, it shapes the sound. It gives you a lot more control over the sound, but it also gives you a much higher output than just a passive uh, coil and magnet type pickup. 
and it's way too much gain for that type of a pickup. So I am going to modify this, and we're going to look at the schematics, but I'm going to bring the... I already dropped the gain uh, on the first stage right after the input jack, and it helped a lot. But the amp still has, number one, it has way too much hum for me, and we're going to fix that. And number two, it's got too much gain. So um, we're going to... The, the thing is, if you modify the gain of the next stage after that, it's going to affect the feedback circuit and this presence control and everything, which this presence works really well. Um, but it will affect it, so we're going to have to recalculate the, the presence control and the feedback loop. Um, just a few things like that. So, again, I just, I'm going to tailor it to the type of guitar that I have. I think if it was an older bass guitar that had the... Uh, kind of the lower output passive pickups, I think it would be a lot better, but um, I don't know. So, and don't worry, we'll, we'll do a little test on this. Don't expect much out of me. I haven't played my bass in many years, and I'm so rusty, I don't even know if I could even play at all anymore. So I'll try to just put a couple notes out so you can hear the tone of the amplifier. And then I'm gonna pull out the schematics, and we're going to, uh, look at some of the changes we can do to the amp to reduce that gain a little bit. If you decide to build an amp like this, I'll show you some of the tweaks you can do, and they're pretty generic, so they, they will work on a lot of tube amplifiers. Let me get the amp turned around and let you see the back of it. Okay, so here's the rear of the amp, and you can see it's pretty simple. Um, I left lots of space for ventilation. The output tubes, as you can see, I sloped the back. You see how I did that? And the reason I did that is so that the air can get out from these tubes. Um, everything fits really well. I just put a slide ledge and this goes, this amp just slides right in, clicks in underneath here, and then just two brack L brackets. One that's a little bit crooked. <laughs> well, hey, measure, twi measure once, cut twice. Is that what I said? Um, no. So, and you can see it fits right in there perfectly. Um, for this, the top and bottom, I actually used these uh, pocket jig, you know, pocket holes with pocket screws and glue. And yes, there is bracing inside the cabinet. It's very, very solid. Um, and I made it out of pine, I'll admit it. I like the sound of the pine. I do like the ring. And that's a big no-no when you're designing audio speakers, by the way. Um, so any of you commenters out there, I'm, I'm way ahead of you. I totally understand what you're going to say. The other thing is you woodworkers out there, um, you know, when you have pine wood like this and it's kind of fast growth, you can see the rings on there. Uh, be aware, you guys, if you're going to make a... Uh, a cabinet like this out of solid pine and you're not going to use plywood understand that wood moves with humidity okay you can do things to control it but you cannot possibly you know you can't possibly eliminate it totally so you have to understand that this came from a living organism a, a tree and you know this part of the grain is just like little straws and they'll suck the water right in and you know the moisture and that will expand it wood is so strong that way that they actually you know when people are cutting rock you know from a quarry when they're quarrying rock they'll actually cut a hole drill a hole in the rock put a piece of wood wedge down in there and then pour water on the wood and as the wood expands it the expansion is so strong it actually shears the rock right off so you can't stop wood when it wants to move. It's going to do it. And so, if you keep all the grain oriented in one direction, it will move that direction. But you can see I do have grain crossing, which is a no-no in normal woodworking. Now, this is very solidly braced and glued, and it is sealed with four coats of polyurethane and with extra polyurethane on the end grains. I even coated the inside uh, of the cabinet very heavily so it helps seal out the moisture and helps minimize the wood movement so 
hopefully we won't get any cracks you know I've seen wooden cabinets like this that were you know 30 40 50 years old and they were still in extremely good shape they may have had a little bit of cracking here and there but almost perfect so it can be done but you have to properly prepare the wood um, had a couple of old uh, rubber feet you know I had laying around so I put those on so nice solid rubber feet um, everything's pretty much hand you know homemade <laughs> from what I had for the most part um, I did buy a couple little supplies you know but not much most of this is stuff I had in the shop in the wood shop and you know just laying around these brackets were actually flat uh, straps and I bent them in my vise <laughs> just used that I just you know used what I had and for you know for using what I had on hand this I'm pretty happy with how it turned out I don't like the hum but the hum is a is a product of number one too much gain in the amp and number two I might need to switch around the filament leads if you sometimes if you flop the filament leads around how do I explain it I, I might be using wrong terminology but for you know to explain it in my terms you kind of if the if the filament leads are out of phase with your um, DC leads you know your high voltage your B plus leads even though the B plus is being rectified to you know to DC voltage and filtered with a capacitor sometimes if they're out of phase they'll kind of beat against one another or make like a beat frequency and you'll get weird hum and a lot of times when I've built amps surprisingly just by flopping around the polarity of the you know, polarity if you want to call it the phase <laughs> Where the orientation of the two filament wind wires it actually reduces the hum greatly um, the other thing is when you're using an ultra linear amp ultra linear amps uh, with those screen taps it reduces the power of the amp but also reduces the distortion but it also can cause hum too um, so uh, there's a lot of different things that can cause it and we can mess around you know with some of those things and that's what I'm going to do to make the hum a little bit better so it's not terrible it's playable but I don't like it and so I'm definitely going to work on this circuit a little bit more but for the most part this amp is completely done other than those little tweaks I'm gonna do so let's get a flip back around and I'll hook a bass up to it and see if we can uh, <laughs> listen to what it sounds like Okay, so I'm set up and I'm not in the best uh, scenario here because the air conditioning's running. It's a really humid, hot day today, so I gotta have the air on in the house. Um, but we have the amp set up, and you can see that's kind of how we're set right now. We have the bass and treble mostly all the way up. I'm gonna take the presence control and turn it down. Okay, and that's pretty much where we are. And in case you're interested, I don't know any of you into instruments, but here is the bass that I'm using right there. And it is a Schechter Studio 5 bass. It's actually pretty nice. I mean, it's got the uh, neck through the body, active electronics by EMG, if any of you who know what that is. So it's a pretty decent bass. These strings are older than Methuselah, so they, they're not very, don't have a lot of action on them. Um, so they're pretty muddy sounding. But uh, even with these muddy strings, uh, this amp sounds pretty good. The only problem is, once again, this bass really has a lot of output. It's entirely too much output, if you ask me. But, um, and again, I can't play anymore, guys. So I'm just going to make a few notes so you can at least get an idea of the tone of the amp. Uh, forgive me ahead of time. I don't claim to be a guitar player or a bass player. I used to play a little bit, but <laughs> I've long since lost it. But maybe this is going to inspire me to start practicing again. So. I mean, you can hear it 
it'll get pretty loud and it's too loud like I said look how low this thing's turned and it's already really loud and I have the volume way down on here so um, like I said we got to control that a little bit and we can and you can see what the uh, what the active electronics does so this lower one toggles you between the front and back pickup and you can hear and you can hear the the difference just between you know this thing has even though there's only five knobs on there there is a ton that you can do with this Of course the the low string so and even with harmonics really nice and that's what I really wanted out of this amp is I wanted to be able for it to get the high notes as well um, that way a lot of bass amps sound really muddy to me, especially the ones with the big 15-inch speakers. So with those ports, with that speaker, with the amp the way it is, uh, with the presence knob, it makes a big difference with the presence too if we turn it down. clear here. I hope the microphone's picking it up. So there you go. Um, maybe I'll practice this thing and, and learn, relearn some of the songs I used to play and uh, <laughs> maybe give you a little better demonstration. I don't know guys. But uh, thanks for coming along with me on this. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Um, one last thing I'll do before I wrap up this video is we'll go to the schematics and we'll look at a few changes that I'm going to make and then maybe I'll do a follow-up video down the road. I have projects coming up. I'm really busy on the bench here plus things at work so I probably won't get back to this for a while but I am going to come back and, and modify some things but we'll look at the schematics and then I'll leave it I'll leave you there and we'll wrap this one up and again thank you all for coming along and uh, you know I wish you all well and thank you for watching this and uh, lots more to come for sure guys and you even got to see my ugly face <laughs> at least partially <laughs> on this one alright guys we'll be right back okay guys we're back to our macro lens here on the bench and uh, on our camera mount so here's our schematic as it sits right now, and there's only one change really that's kind of in here right now that I'm not showing, and that's this right here. And this has been changed a little bit to a 1.8K. But uh, the bottom line is anytime, like, and this has been changed, I drop this to an 8 microfarad. So, the easiest way to change the gain of these stages, if you have a, you know, a traditional setup like this, would be to mess with the cathode resistor and bypass capacitor, if there is one. If you remove the bypass capacitor, it will reduce the gain a little bit and it will reduce the, the low frequency response, the, ba the base response. Um, so you can reduce that or remove that. The other thing you can do is change this resistance and again if you go up in resistance it will reduce the gain a little bit and if you go down in resistance it'll increase the gain of the stage um, and make it distort a little bit easier. So this this resistor here can be anywhere from I've seen them as low as you know 470 
ohms or so, uh, which is really low. Clear up to, you know, I don't know, 4.7K, even 10K in some special cases. But typically you're going to see this to be somewhere around like 680 ohms up to about 1.8K. Um, and you can increase that a little maybe to like a 2.2K. So we can change these stages here um, and reduce the gain a lot. And then the amp won't be so noisy because it's not going to amplify the noise as much. But I actually pulled these three tubes out all together and just these two outputs by themselves was producing a small amount of hum which it shouldn't you know your output transformer kind of acts like its own choke coil so it should normally this is the quietest stage in the amp it's also low gain compared to your preamp stages so there should never be any any hum here at all so a couple things can cause hum um, if you have any hum on your bias, okay, you know, if, if it's a little bit noisy, that could transfer over to here. Uh, these screen taps, you know, when they're 43% taps, um, I think that's what these ones are, they, they actually can cause more hum than if you just have screen resistors in there. By the way, this also, these have 100 ohm screen resistors in them and that's just that's just kind of like protection it's optional a lot of amps fit them in there a lot of them don't you know but I like to put a hundred ohm in there anyways just as a little extra precaution okay um, so this is where we come to our pins 2 and 7 First of all, you want both tubes to be connected in phase with, so pin 7 and pin 7 should be tied together and then should go to one end of your filament and then pin 2 and pin 2 should be tied together and go to your other filament. And what I was talking about is sometimes just swapping these two wires down here. So if, if this is 2 and this is 7, make this one 2 and this one 7. Sometimes just swapping those around makes all the difference uh, when it comes to hum. So that's one thing we're going to do. The other thing, like I said, we're going to do is we're going to change these cathode resistors and these bypass capacitors and we're going to experiment with different values until we get a value that we like. Okay. Now, again, our global feedback is coming in back here. So we can mess with these first three stages and not really cause too much grief with our feedback circuit. So that's going to be good on this one. Some of them will be actual global feedback and I called that that before but this is really not what I would consider global feedback because global feedback comes all the way back to this stage or even this stage and that has a much bigger influence on the circuit. But this one's wired up this way um, again similar to you know the, the original Fender circuit that I borrowed um, the AA864 I think is what this takes after so again that uh, this presence control in here you could hear the difference that it made I also changed this value and I think I moved it down to a 680 ohm because when this pot that I put in there is turned all the way down it really doesn't go all the way to zero ohms it it's still like 40 or 50 ohms or something like that so um, anyhow I did that and put this in there and actually this is a 5k pot with a bypass resistor on it so really when it's wide open it's actually more like 1.5k or so and then when it's all the way closed it's maybe 50 ohms or 30 ohms or something like that so this works out really well you heard that it worked really well so I'm good with that. So really, that's all I'm going to do to this. I'm going to check my bias supply, make sure it's there's no ripple and it's totally clean. I'm going to try swapping these two leads here for my filament, and then we're going to experiment with these these three stages here, and kind of re just because the the type of guitars that I'm using have so much output, they have so much they such a hot output to begin with that. 
you know, we need to bring that down a little bit. So that's what we're going to do. And, uh, and again, we could play with this resistor as well. That affects, you know, how this front end works and it also affects the hum a little bit and things. So a couple resistors, a couple capacitors and uh, swap the leads. Okay. And once I, and again, don't expect a follow up to this video very soon because I have a ton of projects coming up. So I'm not going to post this right yet. Um, until I get it how it works properly. So and that could be a couple of months, so just hang in there guys. And uh, when I get it how I like it, and when I get time to mess with it, then I'll make the mods on my schematic, and then maybe I'll scan it in and uh, clean it up a little bit, and uh, maybe I'll post it for you all to check if you're, if you're interested in it. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this series. I know everything went really fast. I actually had a little bit of time at home, uh, kind of taking care of my wife here, a few health problems we're dealing with, so um, gave me a little free time to come down and work on the bench. Um, so there you go, and uh, again, thank you all for watching, and give me a big old thumbs up, uh, it helps the channel a little bit. and. Uh, We'll see where we go from here. We got, uh, like I said, I have a whole bunch of stuff coming in for the bench. Um, a lot of it is going to be Pioneer gear, and it's just because those everybody that's <laughs> bringing things in just by chance has a lot of Pioneer gear. So um, it's, but it is some pieces that we've never seen before on the channel, and they'll be really interesting. And uh, I think you'll enjoy that. And I have some other things coming up. My, I got my. Uh, DeVry oscilloscope in which uh, it looks really interesting so we're going to do that I got a uh, little table radio that has FM stereo in it and it's a really interesting circuit so uh, I want to do some experimenting with that you know we're going to we're going to totally redo it and then uh, it might be a simple circuit to uh, do a little more demonstration on FM and multiplex and things like that so that should be some fun too um, but uh, in the meantime, stay well, everybody, and thank you all again for watching, and be well, be healthy, and I wish you all the best, and we'll be back soon. Thanks a lot.